This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 439, Add the Best, Drop the Worst, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Hey there, old friend, welcome back, or welcome for the first time. If you're new here, this is where I simply read to you from some amazing blogs covering personal development, minimalism, and more. And we have three other podcasts where I read to you covering entrepreneurship, health, and personal finance. And speaking of personal finance, check out the Creating Wealth podcast with Jason Hartman. He's helping to keep this podcast alive, and I'd love it if you check out his show too. You can find out more at oldpodcast.com slash wealth, and I'll tell you a little bit more about him and his show at the end of the episode, but do subscribe to the Creating Wealth podcast when you have a second. For now, let's get to today's post and start optimizing your life. Add the best, drop the worst by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. When you realize that you have many bad or mediocre habits that are holding you back in life, you may start to feel overwhelmed. Where should you begin? Should you upgrade your health habits? Attempt a 30-day super trial? Commit to working an hour a day on your online business? Here's a simple heuristic that will help you identify which habits to change first. Add the best, drop the worst. Let's start with the first part. Can you identify some of the absolute best habits you could add to your life such that if you maintain these habits every day for the next 20 years, it would make a huge difference in your results? Go ahead and brainstorm a few ideas. Jot them down. You don't need a lot. A small handful of ideas is fine. Now, is there a certain idea that pops out at you? It may be on your short list or you may come up with a new idea. This is probably an idea that you fear, at least a little, but it'll also be the idea that excites you the most when you think about the long-term results. If you added this one habit to your life and truly mastered it, it would trump all the others. If you could only install one new permanent habit, this would be it. What is it? And don't give me that I don't know. If you don't know, then put your brain to the task and figure it out. Of course, you can't really know which single habit is the absolute best. You don't know what the future will bring, so you can't know which habit will be best suited to your future growth and results. But surely you can make an educated guess. And if you can't even guess, then I'll tell you what to use. Start drinking one quart of fresh juice every day. I like carrot, celery, cucumber, apple, kale, parsley, ginger, lime. It has to be fresh, none of that store-bought stuff. Drink it on an empty stomach. Seriously, if your mind is too foggy to think clearly about this, it's a safe bet your diet sucks. Processed foods really cloud up the brain. So let's start with an upgrade there if I were you. Your worst habit. Next, use a similar process to identify your single worst habit. What is that one nasty habit that if you could somehow drop it from your life permanently, it would make a huge difference in your results over the next 20 years? What one problem behavior keeps biting you again and again? Is drinking soda making you fat, foggy, and anxious? Does checking email more than once a day kill your productivity? Are you wasting way too much time watching TV? What habit seems to be slowing you down more than any other? Which one would you be overjoyed to finally be rid of? A decent choice here is to pick the worst food or class of foods that you know has been hurting your ability to enjoy high energy, good mental focus, and deep concentration. Choose crisp and clear habits. Don't make these habits complicated or vague. Choose simple habits with clear and crisp boundaries. So don't pick procrastinating as your bad habits and being more productive as your good habit or overeating as the bad and eating healthier as the good. What do these things even mean? How do you measure success versus failure? These choices are meaningless. If you pick something like that, you're being stupid, so stop it. Don't be stupid here. Be down to earth and specific. When you choose a specific habit, there'll be a clear and sharp dividing line between success and failure. Either you did the action or you didn't. There's no gray area in the middle. Choose a bad habit like consuming coffee and a good habit like getting up at 5 a.m. every morning. These are clear, specific, and easy to measure. Either you drank some coffee in a day or you had none. Either you're up and on your feet at 5 a.m. or you aren't. If you had a sip of coffee or a chocolate-covered espresso bean, you failed. If you had no coffee whatsoever in a day, you succeeded. That's crisp and clear. If you hit the snooze and got up at 5.10 a.m., you failed. If your vertical before the clock hits 5.01 a.m., you succeeded. No room for doubt. That fuzzy gray zone between success and failure is the death of many would-be habit changes. Don't waste your time in that space. That is a zone of pretenders and wannabes. If it makes sense to do so, choose related habits such that your worst habit to drop and your best habit to add are two sides of the same coin. 
For instance, stop drinking soda and drink a quart of green juice every day instead. This isn't essential, but it does make the process of change a little easier if you can pair up habits like this. Begin a 30-day trial. Now that you have your two habits and you've vetted them for clarity and crispness and lack of stupidity, you're ready to get started. Begin by kicking off a 30-day trial of both habits simultaneously. Technically, you're doing two overlapping trials together. One trial is to drop your worst habit and the other is to add your best habit. Use the process described in the article Habit Changes Like Chess, read to you in episode 331 of Optimal Living Daily, to set yourself up for success. Do what it takes to handle the early game, middle game, and end game as you transition from the old behaviors to the new ones. Don't look back. Once you've locked in these habits, repeat the process. Seek out your new worst habit and your new potential best habit. Then recondition those as a pair too. You may have been lucky finding yourself blessed with an assortment of positive habits that have served you well throughout your life, but most likely you still have a collection of time-wasting, energy-draining, soul-sucking behaviors that you'd be delighted to dump. No matter what your starting point is, you can always continue to apply the add the best, drop the worst heuristic. Even good habits can be replaced by great ones. You just listened to the post titled Add the Best, Drop the Worst by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And please join me in thanking Jason Hartman of the Creating Wealth Podcast for helping all of us. He's helping me to keep this podcast going, which is helping you too, because you get to listen for free. Please show him back some love. Check out the Creating Wealth Podcast. He has some really exciting techniques and fresh new approaches to create wealth and build passive income, which I'm a huge fan of. He's a self-made multimillionaire and has had amazing guests on his show like Jenny Craig, Robert Kiyosaki of the Rich Dad Poor Dad series, Steve Forbes, and many more. Find out all about him and his show by visiting oldpodcast.com slash wealth. If you visit him and check out his show, it's a nice help to him, but it's also a big help for this show since he's giving us support. So it'd be great if you could do that. Again, just visit oldpodcast.com slash wealth and check out and subscribe to the Creating Wealth Podcast with Jason Hartman. And now we're just one week away from another book giveaway to a random person on my weekly newsletter mailing list at oldpodcast.com. So make sure you're on that if you want a chance to win. But I will be mentioning it in episodes leading up to that, so I'll leave it there for today. I hope you're having a great week. Thank you for being here and listening and for subscribing to the show. Tomorrow will feature a little bit of a longer post because it's from a brand new author that I'm really excited to have on the show. Took me a while to get his permission. You'll have to wait until tomorrow to hear who it is, so... I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.